Hi and welcome back. And um, today we're going to go back to um, PCB. Okay, not going to be talking about you know, making them. Well, I suppose it is a little bit more about making them. Uh, going to be talking about how to uh, do um, indications from the top layer to the bottom layer. Okay, the uh, through holes and wires. Okay different options of um, connectivity <clears throat> and there's five different types that I can think of why am I talking about this because it's an important thing it's it's, it's missed out in a hell of a lot of um, uh, design videos and application stuff and uh, it, it's really important because how you decide to connect through the board governs how big your PCB holes should be. Okay. <coughs> so, like I said, there's five different uh, things, and we're going to go through the advantages and some of the disadvantages, and maybe have a moan about certain ways of doing it. And uh, right, so what have we got? We've got one uh, wired connections, okay? Soldering a wire through the board. Two, you got via pins. You've got a riveting system. Fourth one is a uh, conductive ink, something like that, that you put in the holes, and, or it could be a paste or whatever. Okay, and the fourth one is uh, plating. Okay. <coughs> now, then the first four are generally used for prototyping. Okay, the last one, the plating one, that's for um, professional level, that's what you get in uh, uh, PCB houses. Okay, and um, it's the one that I actually use here. Well, that and the rivet in, and well, actually I use all of them. Okay, it depends on the task, depends on the design. Okay, design constraints and everything. But um, yeah, but for the primary, it's uh, plating that I do because it's the most practical, most beneficial, and the most trustworthy way I think of uh, doing it. it. Looks quite nice as well. It's yeah, a nice professional product at the end. Anyways. <clears throat> from the top, uh, one, uh, soldering a wire through the board, so, wire, tinned copper, okay, through the board, solder top and bottom, okay. The advantages, it's very easy to do, you don't have to pay too much attention to your hole sizes, or your, your, the wire that you use, okay, it's a quick, easy, dirty job, okay, but it can be quite difficult and quite time consuming if you've got a lot of holes to do in your uh, prototype. It's definitely not practical if you're going to be panelising, making multiple boards, or, um, and uh, I don't know, even if it's a single board and you've got, I don't know, 50 odd connections. Oh, hell, that's a hell of a lot of soldering to do it, okay? And that's a hell of a lot of wiring fiddling about with little bits of wire, getting them in the holes, making sure that it's soldered both sides, you solder one side, solder the other side, the opposite side dry joints because it really flows in, because it's only a small piece of wire. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so that's the quick and easy dirty option. Okay, not necessarily quick if it's a large ball, but definitely quick if you've only got a couple of holes. That can only be done on vires. Okay, <clears throat> if it's a through hole component, the majority of them you can't actually salt on the top side. So if you've got track top and bottom that goes through the ball, and it's, it's a component that sits through that hole. Okay. Usually you won't be able to solder to the top side, okay, only to the bottom side, so it's not going to give you connectivity. Uh, it's for through holes only, so things like LEDs, trims, um, anything, electrolytics, uh, connectors, sometimes you might have a chip holder that's actually, that isn't a turn pin style, that's actually flush to the board. <clears throat> you can't get your iron in on the top side, so, you know, if you haven't considered that, you might have actually buggered up your design. And again, you made a board which is completely useless. So it's really important to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, next option, uh, via via pins. Okay, you get them in packs of I don't know, 50 to 100 over like that. Yeah, and uh, they look like this. You buy them on in packs. You can see those. This is what they look like. Okay, via pins. Same sort of thing. 
same pros and cons as a wire method. Okay, but it's a lot, lot easier to fit these onto your board. Rather than having to trim off wire, solder it both sides, trim it off again to the right size, and everything like that. These, it's a single shot, okay. You, basically you place it, uh, put the entire strip through a hole, and then you snap it off and you've got a pin going through the board that you can solder top and bottom to. The advantage of this over a wire method, okay, it's the same sort of principle that you've asked you, is you can load up an entire board quite quickly with these, a lot, lot quicker, a lot, lot easier than wire, okay, you can see those, okay, and we're through the opposite side, okay, and then pull that, you can keep your board upright, load up your board. Sold all the top side, flip it over, sold all the bottom side, done. Okay, it's a lot, lot quicker method than using a wire, but it's still the same disadvantages, with one extra disadvantage. Well, two actually. A wire can go through any thickness of PCB. A wire pin is quite limited, okay? Maybe two millimeter PCB at the most that these things can go through, <coughs> thick PCB. Also, the hole sizes are, you know, this has got a fixed diameter. You're stuck with using specific hole sizes, okay? They have to match these. If they're too big, they'll through for the holes. Too small, they won't fit in the holes, okay? There is some leeway, you can go slightly larger than the actual diameter of these, because it is, it does have a head on it, okay? Just like a nail or a pin, okay? It does have a head. So you can go slightly larger, but generally you're stuck to the size, the diameter of those. Again, no good if you've got a component going through the hole. You can't run those, one of those through the holes and then solder in the component afterwards because it chews up all the hole, just like a wire. <coughs> right then, next option is the uh, riveting system. Okay. Just like these fire pins, okay, except the rivets have got a hole in the middle. Okay, so same similar disadvantages to this, okay, using the fire pins, but you do get a hole left in the middle of your pin, okay, after you put it in, the rivet contains a hole, so you can do some uh, through hole stuff. Uh, it leaves you with something similar to a plated through hole with copper running through the hole joints to your, your pads and what have you, and it's got a hole running for its center, so you can place a uh, component in after you put the rivet in. The disadvantage of rivet hinning is it's a very, very, very long process, and I haven't actually showed you what the riveting system is, have I? So, what I've got here, okay, of our rivets, okay, you can see those in there, okay, our copper rivets, okay, that's what goes into the hole of your uh, PCB. Okay, again, they are a, you can only buy them in certain diameters, okay? They have an external diameter and an internal diameter. The external one has to match your hole diameter. Very important. Internal one has to make sure it's larger than the component that you actually put through the hole if you're gonna be mounting components through these. <coughs> and this, is the tool to actually do the riveting with. Okay? Now, unlike the vise, you can populate an entire board. The riveting system, you have to do it one at a time again. Okay? Just like doing the wire method. The reason for that is when you press down on this, on the uh, riveter, okay, your board that fits in here with the rivet, okay, you can only do one at a time. And if you jog your board, okay, if you knock your board or you jog it, well, you have trouble getting the board out, okay, because the rivet's closed up on the centre pin on the riveter, and okay, it might be a little bit tough, stiff to get the board out. You might actually knock out all the other bloody rivets, okay. These are not cheap, okay. Very cheap, a little bit more expensive, quite expensive, and you need dedicated tool, okay. So it's the best of both, with a little bit more expense and an extra advantage over this one. Again, I find it's always best to solder these in, 
Uh, okay, just to give you a little bit more connectivity. If they don't rivet very well, because it's a very thin board, uh, you may not get a very good connection, so you might want to run a little bit of solder just over the joint again. Okay, uh, obviously if you put a component through it, don't solder it, you'll probably bung up the hole. Okay, and if you try and desolder the solder out the hole, the hole will close up even more. So, you know, it's a little bit common sense really. <clears throat> Next option. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, conductive inks and pastes, what have you. Yep. Over here, I've also got that method, I've also used that method. I've got a uh, silver ink. Okay, yeah, silver conductive ink. You can see it in the bottle, maybe. Okay, there, you can see it a little bit better there. Sitting at the bottom. Okay, and that's silver conductive ink. Okay, if I can crack this open, just to show you it inside. Okay, uh, I'll dab a little bit on there. Ooh, and there's a bit of a mixing up, I'm afraid. I haven't used it in a long time, I have to keep this stuff in the fridge. It does go off. Okay, but uh, you can see it on the lid there. Okay, you got some ink just here. Yeah, you can see on the lid, it's on the bottom there. It's quite viscous. Okay. Stuff, now that stuff's quite thick. It can get thinner, it can get thicker. That's a medium uh, thickness. Um, you can uh, thin it out with acetone or something like that or a suitable thinner for this stuff I use acetone okay <clears throat> if you do use a thinner do it on a test piece first okay use the wrong thinner this stuff can harden off quite quickly okay it'll go like gel it's horrible but it is expensive okay it is pure silver okay sterling silver um, this stuff, on the other hand, uh, this is a conductive ink, okay, this is a carbon black and graphite, uh, graphene based ink, okay, that you can put into the holes. Both of these methods are very, very messy, okay, make sure that you're suited up when you do it, you've got gloves on your hands, you're wearing a lab coat, okay, and you are in a clean environment, okay, so you don't want any crap getting into this solution. And when you're putting this through the holes, okay, you have to pour this stuff on top of your board. You squeeze, you squeeze it through, vacuum it out, cure it off in an oven, and then again, you have to clean the excess off the board before you continue uh, making the PCB. Um, actually, yeah, that's a good point. <coughs> Via pins, wiring, and what have you, done after you've made the PCB, after you've got all your tracks and everything done. Okay, you've got your holes drilled, tracks milled, bolt chopped out, wire, wire riveting and uh, vias and what have you, it's the last process. Inking is what you do after you drilled your holes before you've started working making tracks on this, okay? The reason for that is this ink goes everywhere, okay? It's a lot harder to get it into the holes after you've made the board and you will end up short circuit in your PCB. Okay, it's a hell of a, you, you basically, it's unusable unless you do it at this stage. You drill your holes first, ink it up, cure it off, clean up your board, make sure you've got connectivity, then you make your board. Okay, you can, it's a very, very thin layer, so you can put your components through the holes. Drawback is, okay, very very easy to break this stuff in the holes when you put your components in or when you're cleaning your board afterwards it's all been cured off okay we're talking microns thicker copper you're connecting on the edge through the hole to the edge on the between the top and bottom is the edge that it's to so it's micron thick it doesn't take a hell of a lot to actually break that bond okay and over the course of time this stuff will break down okay it's not sort of like an, an an ink or paint or anything like that, okay. Once it starts breaking down, it can start going granulated, it can crack in holes, especially if your board's under a lot of tension, okay. It can crack and open circuits, so it's not the best thing to use. But it's there, it's out on the market, okay. <clears throat> um, 
the other option, okay, it's the final one, and that's through hole plating, okay, and um, basically you've got a, uh, you draw your holes again, you don't mill your board or you don't etch your board or anything, you work from the bare board with just your holes in it, and you have to clean up your board, you activate your holes using an activation solution or a conductive ink. Try not to use the ink, okay? Lots of people use it. I find it absolutely crap. Using a, a hole activation solution because that'll actually uh, grow a small layer of uh, a metallic layer in the holes, okay, for plating. Um, but it's not foolproof, okay? When you plate it, you plate it inside the plating tank. That's normally a um, uh, basically it's a copper sulfate solution with uh, an anode and cathode. A year, um, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, the this would be your oh, little cathode. Oh, got me. Ah, oh, brain fart time. Ah, oh, it's trouble when I have a brain fart and a jab run, I'll lose where I am. Alright then. Um, <clears throat> yeah, copper plating, okay, so basically you put this in your tank, this would be your cathode, okay, your board would be cathode. Um, your copper plates in the tank, okay, anodes, electrolyte solution, it's basically copper sulfate solution uh, to plate these balls, okay, and I'll show you that kit um, right now. Alright, so here we are in the uh, electronics workshop and uh, this is uh, my plating kit. Okay, down here in this bowl here, this is our um, hole activation solution. I'll get the lid off this for you. There we go, so that's our uh, activator that we actually activate the hole with. It's a bit like the inking, so it's a chemical process. After you do your board in that, you cure it off in the Reflow oven over here, okay. You can set the times and the temperatures. After it's done, it, like I said, it goes over into this tank, and there we go. We've got our, uh, you can see it there, our uh, anodes, uh, electrolyte solution. That middle bar, that's the um, PCB, you actually clamp the PCB into that, so it's in the solution. Uh, chemical wall to stop it spraying up. And that's all connected through to uh, this baby here. Okay, basically a glorified uh, uh, current controller. Okay, current supply and controller with a little bubbler in there. And that's all that you really use to actually plate your balls with. And what I'll do is I'll run you through this stuff and how to use it in uh, a plate a board. Okay, and uh, how to make up this activator. I want to show you how to make up the electrolyte. So I find that's a lot, lot. Uh, more critical, okay. That's one of the critical things you can get away with doing a little bit of a brain fart on this and then remix the solution so it's back right, okay. It's not expensive, but this one is quite critical, okay. If you get the mix wrong, your balls can come out dull or they can come out too bright and tarnished. Um, get the mix even worse and it, they don't even plate. And yes, it does contain sulfuric acid, okay. It is an acid mix. And I don't suggest anyone making that sort of quantities, five gallons worth of electrolyte, and you'll probably end up burning your hands off if you do it at home. Well, back in the office. Uh, one more thing before I go, which I almost forgot about. <clears throat> Advantages and disadvantages of through-hole plating, okay? Copper plating. Okay. So you saw all the kit there, okay? That's what we use to grow a uh, copper in the holes, okay? Uh, advantages are, it's a good solid connection, okay, it's industry standard, um, maybe that kit isn't, but you know, what the process is, um, the copper connections are very, very robust, they're very strong, reliable, um, yeah, it's a win-win-win all the way around, just have to remember to make sure that it holds at the right sizes for um, connectivity, okay, because you're adding copper into the holes, make sure that your hold sizes are you know large enough to take that into consideration. So if you've got one millimeter wire or track or uh, not track, one millimeter lead component lead and everything going through the hole, make sure that you do draw your hole larger than a millimeter, okay? Normally about 1.1, 1.2 millimeters. 
to, to, to take into consideration that extra material that you're putting in. Uh, disadvantages, uh, it can be a lengthy process. <coughs> uh, larger balls, okay, panelised ones, very good. A lot, lot quicker than doing it at any other method. Small one-off prototypes, okay, can add on an extra hour onto processing the PCB. Um, and, you know, the sort of kit there, you might find that quite complicated or, um, you know, a little bit unnerving, especially if you're not used to dealing with uh, uh, chemicals or any processing like that. But uh, it's something that you do get used to. Um, so, uh, that's that. Uh, like I said in the workshop, I can't remember, did I say it? I didn't say it. Yeah. Next time I'll take you through doing the um, the plating and we'll start off with the, uh, the mixing up a activation solution, okay? So once you've got that done, then, you know, the other steps are really, really easy, okay? <clears throat> so, see you next time.